This is ROTC, the Army Reserve Officers Training Corps, which molds leader. 1,500 men strong, military training at Iowa State College has been in progress since 1868. These men are trained and ready, ready to fill in where needed and bolster the regular Army in peace or war. This is the story of ROTC cadets, what they do, what they learn, how they're produced. The purpose of this story is twofold. First, to inform the general public of the Reserve Officers Training Program. Second, to provide background and information for the prospective ROTC cadets, the high school students. On the drill field, it's pretty much the same for everyone. We'll tell our story while a normal day progresses, so you can see for yourself. At Iowa State, there are three service choices, artillery, engineers, or signal corps. Other colleges and universities across the nation have these as well as several others. There's even an ROTC program for military police, believe it or not. While the inspection continues, let's look at some of the facts and figures. On the average, artillery cadets here number 600 each year. That includes everyone from first year basics to officers. The engineers average near 225 cadets each year and the Signal Corps takes care of the rest. You wonder what all these men are aiming for, what they're learning? You could just about sum it up in two words, leadership and responsibility. You see, the college man has no more and no less an obligation toward military service than does any other citizen. However, the college-trained individual does have an obligation to provide leadership. In peacetime, that means leadership in the normal world we've fought so often to preserve. In time of war, it means leadership in the active service and in the reserve. At Iowa State, our purpose is to develop qualities of moral character, the leadership of which we've spoken, and a high sense of patriotic conviction, coupled with training in the assumption of responsibility. You learn much of that on the drill field. Imagine yourself there, doing manual of arms. This is when you learn by doing. Your officers have been through the same thing, so watch your step and make those movements crisp. It's all written in the book, but there's nothing like practice to get it down pat. The cadet officers are now in the next phase, the command phase, where they learn how to direct troops. You're concentrating on that M1, and probably didn't think of it that way, but in another year or so, you'll be a cadet officer and you'll be giving the orders. Let's pause for a moment for a special feature of this particular drill day. That rifleman marching over here represents something to shoot for. He's a member of the Pershing Rifles, a select group which picks its men from the ranks. We asked his commander to bring him over to give us a demonstration today. Now you've just been through a regular manual of arms, which is something like this, only none of that flipping and spinning around. This is known as the Queen Anne Manual of Arms, something usually reserved for the crack drill units composed of outstanding cadets. Now a little of this can go a long way, and it sure makes the everyday manual of arms seem sort of tame. Now this routine is usually done in marching. You'll note he's marching in place, keeping cadence with the movements. Something to shoot for indeed. It takes real skill to manage a good Queen Anne manual of arms and only the outstanding cadets are asked to join Pershing Rifles. Regular army officers and enlisted men are always on the drill field watching so it pays to do things right. They keep their eyes peeled for men who do the right thing at the right time. We have a full complement of officers and enlisted men teaching at Iowa State, not to mention a lot of civilians in the offices. They're the ones who pound knowledge into your head during your four years in the Corps. While you're a basic, you'll find that outside the classroom, most of your instruction comes from cadet officers. They teach you which foot to step off on and how to hold that M1 and how to develop some semblance of Army discipline. All this time, you're probably thinking, what a bunch of big shots. Well, in another year, you'll be one of those big shots trying to pass on what you've learned. This platoon is doing pretty well. Watch for this right flanking movement coming up and the man in the last rank on your left. There, he went the wrong way, didn't he? But he's learning, just like all the rest. It's here you find there's more to drilling than a simple left, right, left, right. You also find you're being watched. If you do it right, it's noted. You may think you're just one of the crowd, but a good man always stands out. It goes on and on, 
but you're learning to work as a unit. You're learning teamwork, which will be valuable for the rest of your life. Now this platoon's doing all right. Watch when they come back this way and get even with the camera. See if they're keeping those files straight. That's pretty good. They've got a good officer, a man who learned well when he was a basic cadet. His commands carry authority. His bearing is that of an officer, and his men respect him as such. It's a lot of work, and you do have regular college classes to attend while you're a cadet, but it's worth it. You're acquiring those two valuable traits we mentioned, leadership and responsibility, and you're preparing to serve your country when and if needed. Sometimes it seems the drill field work will never end, but it's only the beginning. There's much more to ROTC, and no small part is the class work. As a basic student, you learn basic facts, map reading, the various subjects taught by artillery, engineer, and signal instructors. During the winter, you also meet in common laboratory sections, this particular one concerned with the M1 rifle. Here's where you learn the insides and the outsides, the nuts and bolts and springs and clamps, how it's put together and what makes it tick. As an officer, you'll probably never use one, but you can't command others if you don't know. This is how it looks as a model. This is when you really get to know it. Other classes, such as this, give you a chance to get your hands on it. No bullets, of course, but now you've got the real article in your hands. And you're learning. Learning how to hold it. How to squeeze the trigger. How to do things right. Next, an advanced artillery class. You learn fire direction, anti-aircraft artillery, duties of the battery executive, tactics of combined arms. Naturally, you get to know the parts of your weapon. As in any other job, you get the feel of it before you actually put it to work. While you're studying a field piece, the signal class upstairs is busy. Communications is the big thing here. You learn radios and telephones, teletypewriters, frequency ranges, how to keep the lines open. You find your notebook is a constant companion during those hours of class work, and you learn the rest of the Army will be depending on you, depending on your knowledge, to keep information flowing freely. The engineers have a big job, too. In this case, it's a study of river crossing operations. Other classes will concern military roads and airfields, barrier tactics, construction, utilities, and job management. You'll learn all the basic and advanced tactics of the Corps of Engineers, and when you're commissioned, you'll put them to good use. You remember the basic cadets common lab we saw a while ago? This is the same thing, only for advanced cadets. These are third and fourth year men who are concerned here with such things as military law and administration, orientation with nuclear weapons, and the responsibilities of a reserve officer. Secretary of the Army Stevens recently stated, the Reserve Officers Training Corps has in recent years become indispensable to our national security. Our reserve forces can be only as good as the leadership that directs and inspires them, and he said ROTC is the overwhelming source of that leadership. These are the words you must live up to. Although the ROTC program is in the main devoted to the future, we also have memories. At Iowa State, we have Gold Star Hall, a place set aside for our honored war dead. Many of you will remember World War II when so often a blue star in the window was replaced by a gold one. For thee, they died. Master and maker, God of right, the soldier dead are at thy gate, who kept the spears of honor bright and freedom's house inviolate. Back on the drill field, it's parade day. It's June now, and you've completed your four years of ROTC training. This parade will be for you. 
On the other side of the drill field, the cadets are forming their parade, and you're marching to the reviewing area where you'll be the center of attention. You'll be commissioned now in the Army Reserve. Pretty soon, you'll be taking your tour of duty, where you'll put into practice all the things you've learned in the past four years. Marching, manual of arms, the voice of command, discipline, leadership, all these things have become familiar to you, and now it's your last parade. The old man gives you the once-over for the last time, and as you form in the reviewing area, he throws a salute that means, well done. We've been through a lot, and now you're going out on your own as a newly commissioned second lieutenant. The salute is returned with pleasure, and then the parade, all for you. salute the flag going by, you have time to think of the years that have gone by. Four years of college life, which gave you that valuable education, and four years of service in ROTC, which gave you the chance to serve your country in a position of responsibility. Remember now, first year basic and you worked hard. That's the year you won your first medal and you were proud of it. Later, a platoon leader, and you got to give orders for a change. Got to tell other people what to do. Then perhaps company commander and the responsibility of commanding nearly 70 men. Some of you made the top, the regimental staff with the whole corps of cadets in front of you. And for one of you, regimental commander, the top job in the whole outfit, nothing higher. Yes, this parade is for you. You've been through the works and now you're being commissioned. The regiment is marching in review. So that's the story. You've been trained, you've learned how to be a good officer. This is ROTC.